Welcome back everyone, we have reached chapter 12 of the DB2 course and what we will be discussing now is this, the join operation, all right. Well, I think this can only be described as the core operation in a relational database system. Well, relational database design depends on the distribution of information into separate tables, maybe even in a normalized fashion and to reassemble that information and to combine it in uh, new ways that allows us to uh, answer queries, uh, well, we need the operation that assembles records from individual tables and this is ex essentially and exactly the join operation. Okay, so without joins and no if, uh, and efficient evaluation of joins, no relational database systems. Uh, we will talk about uh, several types of joins uh, several types of joins in the sense that we will look at the predicate, at the join predicate that is used in these join operations. This would be an equi-join where we look for rows that are equivalent or equal in their A and B values in the, uh, in the, in the associated columns. And we will look at the generalized form that would be the so-called theta join, where, well, of course we would uh, combine rows based on uh, the comparison of two column values in the participating tables R and S. Okay, so let's draw a border here. But, uh, well, we, would, we wouldn't... Um, we wouldn't uh, uh, demand equality between the A and B values here. Any comparison operator between A and B, uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal, not equal, all of such uh, comparison operators would be uh, admissible here. And that would be the so-called theta join. So here is the equi join. And this would be the theta join. And both of these will receive some attention in this particular chapter. Well, you could say that this join type, the equi join, would be the predominant, the important join. And you probably would be right, because such equi joins are used to assemble rows that uh, stem from foreign key relationships. But, uh, well, we will consider the theta joins as well. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's enter the slide set for chapter 12. Here we go, all right. So uh, let's see, let's recall the essence of the join operation. Okay, so this is truly a core operation in relational query processing. Given two tables, so the join would be a binary operation that connects the rows of two tables, form all pairs of related rows, and which rows are related, this is determined by the join predicate. Maybe it's an equi equality predicate, Equi join, maybe it's a general predicate, theta join. Okay. When we are talking about two tables here, then uh, this is of course true, but both of these tables don't have to be different. If the two tables are the same table, R join R, for example, then what we are talking about is a so called self join. That would be a particular type of join that. Uh, needs to con needs to some consideration regarding buffer management and so on but we will not look further into self joins here so um, we will talk about two general tables that participate in the joint operation they may be the same so no special consideration of self joins in this particular chapter okay of course we need a playground a probe query again and that would be the query q11 that you see here on the slide we are talking about two tables here, the one and the many table, and they are indeed connected. They are indeed connected by this equality predicate. So Q11 would indeed be an equi-join situation between the tables one and many. And uh, talking in terms of entity relationship diagrams, well, we would probably see a situation that looks like this. This would be the one entity, this would be the many entity type, and of course their entities would be held in these one and many relational tables. And there, there would be a relationship 
that connects the rows of the one and many table. And we are talking about the one to many relationship here. So one row in the one table may be related and connected to many rows on the many side of things here. Okay, and uh, well, if you've uh, attended the DBE1 course, you probably see this relationship in the cardinalities that I'm using here in this very crude entity relation uh, uh, diagram sketch here. All right, so one row of the one table is connected to many rows of the many table. And this, of course, has an impact on the evaluation of the uh, join operation. We will see the details in due course. Uh, well, once we have established a join, of course, we can form a join result that refers to columns of both tables. So I'm uh, selecting the A and B column here from the leftmost, the one table, and the B and C column of the many table here. Okay, so it's a four column result that we are constructing. Okay, so uh, as I told you, uh, one row in the one table may connect to many rows in the many table. Actually, we will uh, set up a database, a sample database, where exactly this will happen. Uh, one row may contact, connect to zero or one rows in, an, in a, in a one-to-n relationship. Okay, so this, of course, tells us something about the expected size of these of the join results. So uh, all of the one rows are connected, are um, stitched together with their matching many rows. There may be zero to n many of these. So this would be the minimum result of the join that we can see here if there is indeed no connecting many row on the right hand side of things then then the join result will be uh, uh, will be empty but uh, well in in uh, in general we will see this uh, this uh, uh, size of the join so each of the one rows connects with its n with its n uh, 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 many uh, connected connected rows in the many table all right. Of course, the maximum size that we can see here, if any one row is connected to all many rows. Okay, so all one rows connect to all many rows. This is, of course, a true corner case. What we would be looking at is an N here, the number of joint partners per row. That is indeed the cardinality of the many table. So any row connects to anything, any one row connects to any many many row and that means uh, we are computing a Cartesian product here. Okay, but this is uh, the corner case that we will uh, not consider. Will we, we will consider some number n, some number n in our sample database that determines the average number of, uh, of joint partners for each row in the one table. Okay, so the setup that we are looking at would be uh, looking at this. Of course, the participating one and many tables here. All right, uh, here we had the ABC columns and uh, ABC, the A column here is acting as a key in the one table. Okay, and we are establishing a very frequently found situation in relational database design. There is a foreign key, there's a foreign key in the many table that refers to the key of the one table here. All right, so this determines the joint partners of the many rows. And as you can see, uh, these first three rows in the many table, they share the joint partner A1 on the left-hand side. Okay, so all of these three rows, they would join with this one particular row here. You see that there is indeed a row A2 that won't find a joint partner, that won't find a joint partner here on the many side. And then there's row A3 that finds two joint partners. Okay, we have prepared the playground tables in such a way that the number of joint partners is actually encoded in column C here. This is of course only an artifact of this particular example, uh, makes things easier to, uh, well, to check for query correctness and uh, just to have a better grip on the data. Okay, so uh, 
what you then find on the many side of things is well the counterpart to that well if this a1 row has three joint partners well when we just number them one two three here on the many side of things and uh, well these are this is the first and this is the second joint partner of row a3 here on the one side of things so this is how these table have been tables have been constructed so there is the obvious joint predicate, the equi-joint predicate between the A columns in these two tables, right? We have we have uh, chosen this particular simple joint predicate because it's it's uh, well supported by the various join algorithms that we will uh, that we will um, discuss here. So the one join operation of uh, SQL or the relational algebra, if you will, is supported by many algorithms uh, on the internal side of things of PostgreSQL and MonadB. And we will have a look at this family of implementations of the join. And you will see that the most of these are really focusing on this equi-join situation because it's just the predominant type of join in relational database workloads. Okay, we will also see that this equality predicate is supported by indices that we will build for the one and many tables. And some join algorithms, not all of them, some join algorithms make it good use of this index support. Okay, uh, I have established a second method to connect the rows between these two tables. And this is based on the B columns, the B columns in both tables. You see that these are string values. Indeed, they are uh, 16 character long strings on each side of uh, the join here. If I would concatenate the strings in these columns, then I would get an MD5 value, an MD5 hash checksum. Uh, well, um, Joint partners are identified based on this alternative condition. So if I just concatenate the two fragments of the MD5 uh, checksum together, such an MD5 checksum is made of 32 characters. So each of the two joint sides contributes 16 plus 16 equals 32 characters. If this concatenation equals the MD5 value of the A column in, on the one side, then also, we have found joint partners here. That would be a more complex joint predicate, and it's not supported by any index in our uh, playground setup. Okay, so uh, this could be an alternative joint predicate to, uh, to look at if we want to observe the behavior of joint algorithms that are not benefiting from index support. Okay, so two alternative ways to connect the rows of the one and many tables. Okay, so much for the setup. This would be our playground for the next few videos. All right, so and as I told you, indeed, the join operation is so important that uh, any database system implementation comes with a variety, a family of algorithms that are able to implement the join SQL or relational algebra operation. Okay, so the system has prepared a whole family of such algorithms to be uh, to be ready to execute joins efficiently in the number of different scenarios. And these scenarios are, well, they are defined by the join predicate type, as we've already discussed. We will probably see equi joins very frequently in the workloads, but there will also be general theta joins and the algorithms have to be able to cope with that. We will find joint algorithms that can deal with any such predicate type and there will be specialists that will only work for equi joins, for example. All right, uh, then joint algorithms have to uh, take indices into account. It would be a waste of resources to have indices defined on the join columns and then uh, just not use them. There will be some algorithms which are uh, a specialist in e exploiting the presence of indices on the joint predicate columns, on the column A, for example, in our playground query. 
All right. Uh, well, there would be uh, join algorithms that work well even if working memory is very tight. So if buffer memory is very tight, then we would have uh, a joint algorithm that still works okay. It would probably won't be the efficient, most efficient algorithm, but uh, well, even under resource constraints, we would be able to perform the join at least. Of course, if there is plenty working memory, then we would like to exploit it. And there is types of join algorithms who have been designed, which have been designed to do just that. And then there is the point of orders. Uh, well, on the physical side of things, of course, there are well-defined orders of rows in the heap files or in the indices that we are processing. Some joins can make use of that order and can even guarantee that the join result, the combined rows, will uh, be produced in one well-defined order. Of course, subsequent operation could then rely on that particular order. Some join algorithms cannot produce such an order. Some join algorithms depend on a well-defined input order. Some join algorithms are indifferent to input order. So all kinds of combinations of scenarios have been uh, have been. Uh, are, are probably uh, experienced during the processing of a workload and that RBMS is well equipped with a family of join algorithms to to react to these, to adapt to these scenarios and to select the best join algorithms in each instance. All right, so what we will discuss here is, uh, well, this is a broad categorization, but we will uh, discuss three types of join algorithms. The nested loop join, which is probably the 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 intuitive uh, and most simple algorithm, but it's super important. It can protest, process any theta predicate, not only equijoins, but any predicate. Uh, and uh, it can benefit from index support if it's present. So nested loop join really has its role in the family of join algorithms. Okay, it's the workhorse in a sense, because it will be applicable to many workload situations. Okay. Then there is a hash join, of course, based on hashing, and it will only be um, able to process equi joins, but in a very fast and very efficient manner, especially if there is plenty of working memory available. The smaller the working memory, the more deg will the performance of hash join degrade, as we will experience. And then there is merge join, which would be the uh, the counterpart to hash join in a sense that merge join is is uh, focusing on sorted inputs. It indeed requires sorted inputs, but it can also guarantee that the output will output will produced in uh, will be produced in a well defined sorted order. So, if orders are either produced by parts early parts of the plan or other or required by later parts in the plan then merge join might be just the right choice for the join algorithm and indeed merge join can be performed in situations where there is little working memory all right so these three broad types of join algorithms will be on the table in the upcoming videos PostgreSQL implements all three kinds of join algorithms. We will also talk about joining in MoneyDB and will in particular talk about the variant of hash join that is being implemented inside MoneyDB. Okay, so let's uh, have a quick look, a quick first look at nested loops join in this video. Okay, the nested loop join or NLJ or just NL join. All right, nested loop join. Well, it's probably the join algorithm that one would think of first if you are talking about joins. Of course, there's the two contributing tables, the one and the many tables. And uh, one of these tables in these, uh, in these diagrams that we are uh, sketching on these slides, it will always be the left-hand side table. One of these tables would be designated the outer table the other table would be the inner table. Okay, so one on the left-hand side is the outer, many on the right-hand side is the inner table in this nested loop join. And this outer and inner indeed refers to two nested for loops that we will use to scan over the rows of the participating tables. All right, so we would scan the rows of the one table in an outer loop and will of course first hit row A1 here. 
All right, we would then initiate an inner loop and start a scan over the many table from top to bottom and find all the rows that can contribute to the join result based on our join condition. Here we have a join condition that asks for equality on the A columns. All right, so uh, if this is our outer row, then these three inner rows in the scan will indeed qualify and we will generate output rows based on these combinations of rows. All right, we would further scan and then find A3 and A3 again here. Uh, these would be non-matches according to a quality join predicate and uh, well these rows would just be skipped and not contribute to the join result. All right, uh, now the inner loop has been uh, completed and we would advance our scan in the outer loop and then reach the second row here. Having reached the second row, we would restart the inner loop scan, the scan on the many table and scan from the first row again and would scan the uh, entire many table again only to find that there is no joint partner for this A2 row. Okay, we would then continue our scan in the outer table and then reach the A3 row here, which again would lead to a new rescan of the inner table, which would find two joint partners in this particular case. So the A3 values here, they join up with the A value of the current outer tuple. All right, and well, of course, this is what we will find in our join result. This is the join or the equi join based on the A columns, and you can see that uh, uh, well, this is an indicator which iteration of the outer loop, which iteration of the outer loop has contributed these particular result rows. Of course, more result columns, the B and C columns of the one and many tables could be included in the result here. And as you can see, the second inner iteration of the outer loop did not contribute anything to the overall result here. All right, so, uh, well, whether a particular combination of rows can contribute to the join result is, of course, determined by the join predicate. And you see that we've indicated this equality predicate between the A column values here. This equality predicate is, of course, evaluated cardinality of outer times cardinality of inner times, which can be a lot if outer and inner have large cardinalities. Indeed, we also have to uh, evaluate the joint predicate for all combinations that in in uh, that do not contribute to the join result in uh, in the end. Okay, uh, but uh, of course this is a consequence of this very simple nested loop setup of the entire join algorithm. And uh, well, looking at the pseudo code that is uh, that is associated with a nested loop join algorithm, you would indeed find exactly what you're probably ex uh, 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 anticipating. So this is the nested loop join, the NLJ pseudo code algorithm. All right, it's a good introduction to all the pseudo code snippets that we will see in this uh, in this in this course in this chapter 12 we will see other variants of nested loop join we will also see pseudo code for merge join and pseudo code for hash join this is probably the most simple variant uh, there is an outer and inner table that are participating in our example this would be the one table this would be the many table and there is a join predicate that is being used a join predicate in this case equality on the a columns but uh, as we uh, uh, as we see, well, there is no particular uh, constraint on this theta join predicate. Uh, theta could be anything, any comparison on any participating columns, columns from the two tables. There is no constraint on theta, which is uh, a big plus for this particular join algorithm. And this is exactly the first point made here in this list of bullet points. There is no restriction regarding theta and the participating columns. All right. So if these are the parameters, this is the inner, the inner uh, uh, code block for a nested loop join. 
what you see is that we prepare the join result J here. So in all the pseudocode fragments that we will see in this uh, in this chapter, J would be the join result. In the end, J is being returned. That would be a table of connected, of composed rows, of join results. Okay, we start out with an empty result and then uh, perform our nest iteration. Uh, iterating over the outer table, the leftmost table first, and for each row O, restarting a scan of the inner table. If the predicate is fulfilled, we have a pair OI that can be appended to the join result. Very simple. Of course, we have to restart the scan, as you can see, for each outer row that is bound to the variable O. All right, otherwise, there are no restrictions regarding the sort order of outer or inner. We don't depend on any sort order. Any sort order in outer or inner is fine. You will see that it was, this will be different for the merge join algorithm, for example. If we look at, uh, at the order in which results are appended to the join result J here, then you will see that uh, the order of rows that are occurring in J, that the order of rows reflects the order of the rows of the outer participating table. Okay, so these rows in the in the join result J, they will be sorted as just like the rows in the outer table, and this can be uh, quite important. If the sort order of the outer table is interesting for the rest of the plan, the nested loop join will preserve and not destroy this particular sort order. Later operations can rely on that. All right. Uh, well, looking at this particular code, we just visit any combinations of rows OI taken from the outer and inner tables. And then for each of these combinations, we will evaluate the, the join predicate there is no contribution and no participation of any index structure whatsoever uh, that is maybe defined on the outer and inner table. So indexes are indeed ignored. And well, that would be a true thumbs down, but we will see that we can modify nested loop join to take indices into account. Of course, uh, since we repeat the scan of the inner table again and again and again, we will benefit if this is an operation that can be performed quickly. For example, if the inner table is so small that it fits entirely in, into the database buffer. The first scan of the inner rows would probably won't, won't probably find the uh, rows in the in the buffer. They would then be brought into the buffer. And because they are used again and again in this nested loop scan, well, uh, the buffer uh, replacement strategy will properly recognize these rows as being val valuable and will hold them in the buffer. So in the second, third and subsequent iterations of this inner loop, we can expect or can hope that the rows of the inner table are already present in the buffer. This can really speed up the variation of nested loop join. Okay, so we expect some penalty on the first inner iteration, but can expect some benefit, some buffer benefit on our subsequent operations. So you will find that database systems often, often elect the inner table to be the smaller table. Of course, there is uh, no predefined ordering of the join table arguments. Who is outer and who is inner in this particular join arrangement is completely completely arbitrary. The system can decide and you will find that the system will often decide to have the inner table to be the smaller table. Okay, because the chances that will fit into the buffer are just larger. All right, so so much for this particular introduction to the joint processing. This is nested loop join. We will refine nested loop join in the upcoming video and then talk about the other more advanced algorithms. Uh, but constrained algorithms, uh, merge join and hash join in upcoming videos. Looking forward to talk about this with you. I hope you will be around. See you then. Bye bye.